Hi, I'm pleased to say I'm joined now by Tom Hunt, who's former Conservative MP. Well, let's kick off with uh, the news story about the fact that Germany, <laughs> Joachim Stamp, that's the name of their migration commissioner, they've looked at all the facilities that we've had built in Rwanda that apparently we're just not going to use anymore, mm. and Kigali said, kind of rightly so, we're not going to give you the money back for it just because you've changed government and don't want to use it anymore. And they're saying, well, maybe we could use it. What do you make of that? I think it's it makes us look like a bit of a laughing stock, to be honest. I mean, it was bad enough when we, you know we've been spending, billion, sending millions of pounds to France. You know, France could sort this problem out overnight if they if they accepted back for people who have illegally entered our country. We've been sp sending millions of pounds to France who have failed to help us properly sort the problem out, and now we're we're spending hundreds of millions of pounds creating facilities that Germany are probably going to be using. I think it's it's ludicrous. It makes us look like a laughing stock, uh, but. You know, I, I think Germany have, they, a lot of the German people have had enough, you know, they've had enough of the consequences of mass migration, um, they've had enough of all the virtue signalling and the Angela Merkel approach and, you know, clearly their local, their, their recent election results make that clear. But uh, the, the key thing with illegal migration on small boats is that if you don't have a workable deterrent, it's going to get worse. You're not going to solve it. Uh, this was our deterrent. And I continue to believe that if the Rwanda bill was strong enough and it got multiple flights to Rwanda, it would have provided that deterrent. It was never allowed or able to work because we didn't have a strong enough well, there bill. Was a, there was a moment, wasn't there, that it was being mooted that various people were crossing from Belfast down to Dublin because of the yeah. Rwanda plan. I mean, whether that was true or not, I don't know. I recently had a tip-off from someone I know in Brussels who said to me that um, Dublin is where everyone's now heading because they think they can sort of reverse charge the border and get into the UK that way by first of all uh, arriving in Ireland. Um, but you know what, what I find staggering about this is, and I mentioned it to Mike earlier, uh, I'm looking at the case of Greece right and apparently uh, Arsuela went out to Greece and uh, took a little boat tour on the islands of Samos to see what they were doing there because back in 2015 the illegal immigrant arrivals to Greece were 856,720, no, 856, I can't even say that number, it's so long, but 800,000 odd. Um, in 2022, it was 12,000 odd. That is a staggering, staggering drop. Turns out they've been pushing boats back this whole time. Why, why didn't we do that? I mean, but one thing I'd say, I, mean, I, I probably would be up for doing that, actually. I mean, there's not much I wouldn't be up for doing. I, I make that really, really clear. I mean, I, I was, when I was in Parliament, I was about as robust as it was possibly, possible to be on this issue. Um, I think the one thing I would say, though, is that, you know, the English Channel is one of the bus busiest sort of uh, shipping channels in the world. I think it's, it might be logistically slightly easier. But at the same time, I'm not saying we shouldn't have tried it. But ultimately, we had a Rwanda bill that I think actually the previous Prime Minister knew wasn't going to work. It wasn't strong enough. You know, I, I supported amendments put forward by Robert Jenrick, who was in the studio earlier, to make the bill strong enough so that it would work. But until we are prepared to take on the human rights laws, um, things like the ECHR, and actually make a, make a few, um, put a few noses out of joint in the glitterati at a global level, we're not going to they're not going to sort this problem out. Right. I mean, when people talk about things like the ECHR and international law and what is allowed under international law and so on and so forth, first of all, I always want to know that what happens if you break international law? Do you go to some sort of, uh, you know, weird prison in The Hague that no one's ever heard of? I don't think so. Um, it turns out under international professor of maritime law, uh, uh, Professor Jonathan Chua at the City Law School in London said pushbacks are not illegal per se. The Law of the Sea Convention 1982 allows coastal tape states to take the necessary steps to prevent the passage of any vessel that is not innocent. That includes a vessel seeking to unload persons contrary to the immigration laws and regulations of the coastal states. Article 19 bracket 2 bracket bracket G bracket bracket whatever that means. So apparently pushing the boats back is allowed. Now when it comes to uh, the good old European Court of Human Rights, which seems to have been repeatedly used uh, to prevent people being deported or sent back to their home countries. Literally this morning, while well, I was putting my slap on and listening to the Today programme and ruminating over all of this and, and thinking especially about this story about sending prisoners over to Estonia. And I, I said to my other half, I was like, well, they've got to have rights to family access. Surely that's going to be in the ECHR. And then it sort of squirreled into my head that also, according to the ECHR, all prisoners should have the right to vote. 
And here we go, Hearst versus UK, number two, 2005, ECHR 681. Uh, they ruled that the blanket ban against prisoners voting in the United Kingdom was totally against the ECHR. So it turns out we can selectively uh, dismiss or disapply elements of the ECHR. What is going on here? Why, why if we can ban prisoners from voting, yeah. can we not send them on planes to Rwanda? Why can we therefore not push back? But why, why does the UK, when it suits us, go, well, we're not going to go along with the ECHR, which most other countries do. Germany's talking now at length. Good old Joaquin Stamp, our new favourite uh, immigration minister in Europe is also talking about disapplying elements of the ECHR. Yeah. Why are we so lily livered about this? Well, look, I, I'm not overly sycophantic about international law. You know, I, I, I think we've got one of the, you know, the oldest democracies in this country. We've, we, you know, the rule of law has always been a massive thing in this country. I don't, I'm, I'm not overly sycophantic about international law. I believe in national democracy. And I believe in the ability of our nationally elected parliament to make laws. You know, and I think it's... I think it's pretty clear to me the ECHR is going in the same sort of direction as the EU went. It's overreaching. It, what was established by Winston Churchill after the, after the Second World War has changed beyond recognition. Um, supranationalism, which is one of the things I didn't like about the EU, is, is well, well alive within the ECHR. It's undermining our national sovereignty. And people who say, oh, let's just start an international discussion about the ECHR and make a few tweaks, it's the same thing about the EU. You know, it would be about as successful David Cameron's attempt at renegotiation <laughs> of the EU. And, I, and actually, that, that is why, you know, Robert Jenrick, you know, the only leadership candidate out of the five, who's saying, we need to leave it. And he's right to say that. I think, I think one assumes you're Team Jenrick at this point. Well, actually, I'm, I'm still actually... I'm, 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 I'm almost there, but... Um, you're I'm, all, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm still, uh, the I'm still, I'm still, <laughs> Twice yeah. you've name-dropped the Jenrick, yeah, and yeah, uh, you're yeah, like, yeah. Oh, am I right? <laughs> uh, let's speak to yeah. David, who is in South Wales on this. David, wh what do you think about the fact that Germany is looking at all of that accommodation we've built over in Rwanda and saying, well, if they ain't going to use it, maybe we should? Well, I applaud them because if looked at the uh, immigration, illegal immigration problem logically, then they would be, all the immigrants would be better off going to a developing country rather than coming to the, the voids. They can establish their own culture and not have a clash with an alien culture in this country. And uh, but that's logic. But the thing is, what have the weakness of our immigration system is our lawyers. They challenge everything in the courts. The courts fold to any challenge, and we are stuck with having to accommodate people we don't want. Yeah, do you think that's a fair interpretation there, Tom? That it is very much the sort of left-leaning liberal judges and, and, and the like who sort of come up with this idea that everyone crossing the channel is a refugee, that, um, you know, you should be given a second, third, fourth chance, the way we should apply the law has to be every T crossed, every I so, dotted. So my view is not a single person crossing the English Channel is a refugee. They're not. And the reason for that is because they've, they've come from a safe country. Right. They've all come from yeah, France. Exactly. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Because France has recently been saying, well, it's all very well, you've given us all this cash money, but we're having the problem of trying to stop all these people and we're spending a lot more than you gave us. This is apparently their latest line. And saying, well, the problem is the UK are like El Dorado to these migrants because they know they're going to get... Uh, a, a hotel room and they know they get to work on the black market now we're not handing out jobs down the local job centre to them but I just wonder how many people delivering fast food washing cars and painting nails are people who are paying taxes well I mean I think it's I think they've actually got better than a hotel room now they've actually got a, a permanent council flat and um, and everything else and, and a pathway to citizenship under Labour but like, I, I think that they're I think that if every single person who illegally entered our country uh, from France was given a, an Earl Grey a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and taken straight back to France, I, know, I like that specifically an Earl <laughs> Grey. The, 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 the problem overnight <laughs> would be resolved. Yeah.
Well, no, I mean, this is, I, 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 I couldn't agree more. I think that actually the optics of pushing boats back clearly sends the message or sending boats back clearly, uh, you know, sets a tone and people suddenly realise when they're being flogged spaces on a boat, if you look at the odds right now, yes, they'll know there have been deaths in the channel, will they? I, I assume they will. But the odds of surviving that route is something like, you know, least at least one in a thousand, probably far better odds than that. And so people go, well, you know. But look, at the end of the day, these, these virtue signalling judges and the French to an extent. I mean, this, the, the tragedy we saw in the channel, you know, a week or so ago with multiple people dying in the, in the channel. Look, at the end of the day, if, if anyone's responsible for that, it's those who are preventing us from being able to uh, control our own borders. But, but, but this, is a, this is an emergency. It's a crisis. Mm. Right now, yeah. as far as I can see, we don't have the ability to control our own borders. Now, one of, one of the other things that my new favourite man on earth, Joaquin Stamp, has said, which is something I've been saying <laughs> for years, by the way, for years. I think I was the only person really to start banging this drum on media about two, three years ago was the fact that when you look at the migratory flows coming into the EU, this is not just people fleeing war zones like they were from Syria or whatever back in the day when Angela Merkel said refugees welcome. This is war games as an act of invasion by yeah. countries such as Russia. And you look at the migratory flows coming from Africa and they're at the very least profitable enterprises for mercenaries like the Wagner Group, um, who are also meanwhile overthrowing democrat democratically elected regimes in Africa, which yeah. then creates the migratory flows. We've seen them bussing migrants yeah. to the borders of Belarus and Poland. Um, good old Greece, uh, as well as turning boats around, have actually started to build a massive chicken wire fence with the mm. border Turkey because Erdogan uh, plays games in this regard as well and good old Joaquin Stamp has turned around and said this is grey zone warfare. Mm. If this is being used from a hostile state as a, a, a way of destabilising us, yeah. we must act and nothing should be off the table. Why is it that the Conservative Party never really addressed it like that? I think, I think we were weak on it. I think we, we failed on it. Uh, I was desperately disappointed as a Conservative MP. The first time I mentioned it in the Commons was April 2020. I was like a broken record about this issue. I didn't want to go on about it the whole time, but I felt like I needed to until it was solved, because it was never properly solved. Labour are going to be even worse on it, but that's not good enough. It's not good enough for us to, to, for me to say that as a Conservative. We, we, we were, <laughs> and, and also, there's no point saying we will do whatever it takes. If you're not actually prepared to do whatever it takes, I'm not anti-refugee. I've been to the world's biggest refugee camp in the world three times. I want us to have a sensible, right. sustainable refugee policy, which, by the way, has a lot of women and children in it. You know, about 80% of those coming from France are healthy single men. Yeah. You know. Well, do you know, it's interesting, isn't it? I always think, so there's another story here, the fact this failed asylum seeker is 40 years old who raped a 15-year-old girl after his deportation back to Africa was blocked by a cabin crew on Air France. So, you know, thank you, Air France cabin crew. Uh, as a result of not deporting him uh, back to the Congo, he went on to rape a 15-year-old. Frankly, those people should end up in prison or with a criminal mm. sentence for obstructing the passage of justice. Um, you know, when you look at situations like that, and when you think, if you just communicate with people, these things are acts of grey zone warfare. Wagner mercenaries are part of all this, but also, actually, on the flip side of this, the more people you let cross the channel, there are very sinister things that happen upstream of that that yeah. people don't talk about. Mm. You know, it's not, yes, it's vastly young men who come over, and probably vastly young men who begin those routes, but there are yeah. women and children who begin those long, long routes yeah. as well, who end up being plucked off to go in into sex slavery, domestic slavery, and mm. the young ones, organ harvesting. Yeah. And unless you can actually stop this, and the idea that the Labour Party are going to crack down on the gangs, or crack down on the Taliban and hostile states and Wagner mercenaries and China and, and, and Erdogan of Turkey, oh yeah, we're just going to crack down on all of those by having a hundred new people in a department, is for the birds. This is, uh, this is, I think this is arguably the biggest issue facing this country right now, and the biggest issue facing many other countries. You know, and I and I think that you know, you know, Starmer says he wants to crack down on people smugglers. He voted against legislation that was aiming to do precisely that when he was leader of opposition. It will get worse under the Labour Party, um, but I, I think it's it's. I'm desperately concerned about the consequences for his country. I think the numbers will skyrocket. We're going in the wrong direction. We're seeing, and, and you know, that forty-year-old. I mean, why is he still here? Why is it? Why is that case still going on? I mean, and, and this is right. Two thousand and five. His deportation was blocked by this do-gooder cabin he still group. Here? It's twenty twenty-four. And this guy um, went outside protesting, saying, you know, refugees aren't criminals. Sorry, mate. 
you literally are. He is a criminal. You're a rapist. He literally is a criminal. He's, he's the worst kind of criminal. Um, so I look. It's very, very clear to me, and it was desperately disappointing that as a, as, a, as a party, when we were in government, we didn't take the steps necessary. Because actually, I think the country was thirsty, hungry for somebody who'd fight for this country's interests. Yeah. And actually, if that meant having a big row with a global glitterati, all the Fine. better. Fine, that was what we, we seemed to be quite the, good the, at. The country would have rallied behind him if, yeah. he, if he'd done that, but he wasn't prepared to do that. And of course, we paid the electoral consequences of that. Yeah. Do you know, I always thought that we would be the first country to turn boats around and send a message, stick our head above the parapet and lead the way in all of this. It was, um, yeah. And apparently, no, it was good old Greece. So there you are. <laughs> uh, Tom Hunt, former Conservative MP, it's been delightful speaking.